What's happening with the red heifers? Is the third temple about to be built in Jerusalem? Is the tribulation about to begin? Today, we have some new inside information from Israel that you're going to absolutely want to see. But first, why has everything gone so quiet regarding the heifers and the third temple? This is no accident, folks. It's the end times. Did you really think everything would go as expected? Think about this. If the end times are a time of great deception, like Jesus predicted, it shouldn't surprise us that Satan isn't going to let us see the whole picture right now. This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and you watch this channel for biblically-based views of the end times and information you just don't get elsewhere, like on this subject. Today, we're going to examine why the sacrifice of a red heifer or red cow is key to the end times, why a heifer was not sacrificed when it was the appropriate time back in October, and what we can expect over the next several months, what we should be looking for, and we have new information for you, so just keep watching. But first, a shout out to Fisher Man on our channel who did some of the hard lifting and research for us. First, Christians might ask why we need a red heifer or a red cow and why we need the third temple for that matter. The answer is, we don't. But those practicing Judaism think that they do. Jews believe these things are their source of purity and righteousness before God. Christians know their purity comes from the once and for all sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. But those in Judaism don't have faith in Jesus. So they think they have to rely on the Old Testament systems of the Mosaic law to grant them these things. Now, Christians don't need red heifers for purity but they do need them so that Jesus will come back. <laughs> what am I talking about? Well, they need them because of prophecy. The written word of God is going to require sacrifices on the Temple Mount. Jesus will not return until the man of sin, the Antichrist, takes away the twice daily sacrifices, so they have to start. And he does that at the midpoint of the 70th week of Daniel. Then. He sits on the holy place, probably in a rebuilt third temple, and declares himself God. This then launches the great tribulation. These things are found in Daniel 8, Daniel 9, Daniel 11, Matthew 24, Mark 13, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 4. The first step or linchpin in all of this is the start of those twice daily sacrifices by the Jews on the Temple Mount. The rest of the events that we mentioned are all dependent on those sacrifices starting. And the red heifers are key, after all, to getting the animal sacrifices started on the Temple Mount. You might ask, why is that? Because without the sacrifice of the red heifer, those in Judaism don't think their priests are pure enough to ascend the Temple Mount and do the sacrifices. So once they sacrifice a red heifer, they will feel pure enough to ascend the Temple Mount and do the twice daily sacrifice and then probably build the third temple. Then the Antichrist can come and then finally Jesus can come. But the red heifer is key to all that starting. The red heifer sacrifice is outlined in Numbers 19 from our Bible. It prescribes that for the ritual purity of the Jews, a red heifer without blemish was to be killed facing the tabernacle and its ashes mixed with living water or what we would call spring water today. This mixture of ashes and water was then sprinkled on a person to make them pure. Once the temple was built, this sacrifice was to take place on the Mount of Olives in the site of the temple. Modern Jews believe the Mount of Olives is still the appropriate site in the view of the Temple Mount where the old temple used to be. Now, you're probably aware that Christian ranchers from Texas provided to the Temple Institute in Israel, who's trying to rebuild the temple with five unblemished heifers in September 2022. These heifers were taken to the area of Shiloh, you might pronounce it Shiloh, where the ancient tabernacle was and they were housed there. As of October 2023, 
three or four of the heifers were still unblemished and also became the right age to be sacrificed. This same group from Texas bought a plot of land on the Mount of Olives where this sacrifice could take place. Here's a short video clip taken from that exact plot of land. The five red heifers are now in a secure, undisclosed location in Israel. Plans include moving them sometime soon to a visitor center in Shiloh, where the tabernacle of the Lord once stood for nearly 400 years. It had to be exactly at the front of the place that the priest that made this ceremony can see the holy of the holy place. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo owns the land here on the Mount of Olives. And we hope that in a year and a half from today, we can make here in this area the ceremony of the red heifer that actually will be the first step to the temple. And they are pure mm -hmm. and they are waiting. You're so waiting. we have the priest, we have the red heifer, we have the land and we have everything ready. We just need to wait another one and a half year. So we believe that uh, it's very likely that the ceremony would happen somewhere in the area of Passover 2024 out to possibility of Shaviot 2024. Somewhere in that timeline, the cows would be old enough and it would be the proper timeline for that ceremony. So everything was ready as of October 1st, 2023. In fact, in September 2023, we predicted that if nothing happened, the red heifer sacrifice would take place on the Mount of Olives within 45 days from that point, and I believe it would have. But we all know that something did happen in October in Israel. This attack and then this war. At the time, we reported information provided by our community that a major reason for that attack was to stop the red heifer sacrifice in its tracks. Red heifers represent the eventual promise of sacrifices on the Temple Mount and perhaps the Temple. Some in Islam would do anything to stop that, even stage an attack. Now, many scoffed at that idea at the time. But, you know, we'd like to play a clip of one of the leaders of that attack that tells us in his own words what led to it. <laughs> وبدأ تقسيمه الزماني والمكاني فعلا وأحضرت البقرات الحمر تطبيقا لخرافة دينية مقيتة مصممة للعدوان على مشاعر أمة كاملة في قلب عروبتها ومسرى نبيها ومعراجه إلى السماء That was Abu Obida and you heard him say the red cows and what he called the detestable religious myth of the Jews was a central factor in why that attack took place. And guess what? It worked. The sacrifice that looked like a sure thing in early October, along with a peace treaty between Saudi Arabia and Israel, all those things were delayed by this war. In fact, that is why the Temple Institute went silent and underground to protect the remaining unblemished heifers. This ministry has contacts, you know, at the Temple Institute. But those contacts are now completely silent. This group frequently posted online, and those posts have stopped. Getting real information on the heifers has become very difficult. But we still have some contacts. One of our contacts is in Israel and is giving us information, but he must remain nameless and faceless. And I'm sure you understand why. This contact told us that the heifers that you see out there today, many of them are actually decoys. They have decoys all over to protect the pure and kosher heifers. We also reported in the fall that we suspected that the heifer ceremony might have been done in Shiloh right after the attack. Now, this was a guess on our part. Like we said, all of our contacts have gone silent. The idea was that if the heifers were kosher and met the requirements, and if they had reached the right age, the priests would want to sacrifice them right away. Because on any given day, the heifers could become blemished and the opportunity for the sacrifice could have been lost. They haven't done this sacrifice for 2,000 years. Could you imagine losing that opportunity? That at least was our thought. However, 
Our contact, who knows more than we do, disagreed with that opinion. Our idea was that since the original heifer ceremony, done by Moses and Aaron, was done in front of the tabernacle, not the temple, Shiloh would be a private and acceptable location. Our context point was that once God chose the Temple Mount, however, for the place where his name would dwell forever, that made the Mount of Olives the only spot overlooking the Temple Mount. Writings I've uncovered from the Temple Institute seem to also confirm this. So, of course, the site will make security and privacy very, very difficult for the Temple Institute to get the sacrifice done. Now, when is it going to happen? The Talmud, which is the writings of the Pharisees and the rabbis, say the heifers must be between two and three years old. They turn two in October, so they have about nine months left to get the ceremony done before the heifers are too old. We heard in the clip from the rabbi and from Mr. Stinson, who is the man who brought the heifers to Israel, that they envisioned a date between Passover and Pentecost 2024, or April 22nd to June 11th. These are the dates you might want to keep your eye on. Another date to remember they didn't mention is the Sabbath of the Red Heifer, which celebrates the sacrifice of the first heifer by Moses and Aaron. This happens on March 29th, so you can add that date to your mental list as well. Although the Jewish priests would love to do the sacrifice on Holy Day, you know, security (laughs) is going to be much harder if it's on a day that really matters, like Passover, much harder to maintain. I mean, that is when the bad guys would be trying to interfere with the ceremony. They would specifically be watching those days. But if a just an average day was picked, maybe very early in the morning before the bad guys woke up, with Ben Gavir, the minister of security, who is a big fan of the Temple Institute, providing some moderate security, they might get it done. The actual plot of land is on the property of the church in that area and is somewhat secluded, so it could possibly be done and over before anyone realized it happened. But there is a risk. Now, if you didn't notice, Passover happens in April. And as we reported in this previous video, April is potentially a month with incredible signs in the heavens, a two-horned devil comet right on Passover. The USA's total eclipse, you've probably heard of that one, the X marks the spot eclipse, and also all the planets lining up on one side of the sun during that eclipse, so that when the sun is darkened, all the planets will line up in the sky in a straight line. We have wondered if this month of April is also a month then, with all these signs, that the nations are going to gather to negotiate a Middle East peace agreement that could divide the land of Israel. So, with all those signs and with political events possibly hanging in the air, will we see a red heifer sacrifice as well? Well, we don't know. And given the security around the heifers, we won't know. And I would assume no other ministry is going to be able to tell you that either. Now that we know with the next couple months likely have in store for the heifers. What should you do as a Christian? For one, watch. Keep your eyes peeled for something happening between March 29th and into the summer. Be ready. Don't be surprised like the rest of the world. Second, be ready for the repercussions of this taking place because they're going to be huge. What about the Jews in Israel? The religious Jews will be all in for a temple. Even the non-religious Jews will probably see this as some kind of a sign. And many may join the calls for sacrifices to begin at a temple. What will happen among Israeli Christians? Our friend, Pastor Howard Bass, whose little church is only 25 miles from the Gaza border, told us that Israeli Christians are waiting for two signs to tell them that the end times have truly begun the red heifer sacrifice, and the building of the third temple. So the red heifer will be a wake-up call to Christians there. And, you know, moderately knowledgeable Christians in your country as well will be awakened. Pray for exactly that right now. 
that God will wake them up to his soon return by this event, and also that you can be there for them to answer their questions and send them some appropriate videos like the ones we have on this channel. Because although you and I might be joyous over the soon return of Jesus, the majority of churches will be frightened to death. Your congregation and friends will need you now more than ever. What about the rest of the Mideast? The threat of doing a red heifer sacrifice was enough to cause a war, as we just saw. Imagine when the real thing takes place. There will be an outcry across the globe, plus rockets, terrorists, etc. And of course, the media will cry out about this. And the colleges and all those who cried out against the war will double down against this. And on this channel, we anticipate the division in our churches will be absolutely incredible. Because remember, there are many, many in your churches right now who are not on Israel's side. So prepare to be a voice of reason and reconciliation be ready for it. Begin to think what you might say to those who are on one side or the other. What about the nations? Well, although they're going to be outwardly upset and denounce the red heifer sacrifice inwardly, they will likely think this is a means to get Israel to the negotiating table, to exchange a two-state solution and a Palestinian state for the right to do these sacrifices. And that is something many watching this teaching have thought for a long time. You know, the main thing is the main thing. For them, the covenant with the many, where the globalists can assume power over the nations, is behind almost everything we see. So if this heifer helps them achieve a two-state solution, in order to convince the world to sign this treaty, giving the UN complete control over the world, then they will secretly be overjoyed at their opportunity for just such a peace deal, and they will probably double down on it. So expect that. So speaking of that peace deal, one of the other big issues is who's going to govern the region, that region, yeah, that one, when the conflict is over. Click right here and find out why the media freaked out when Benjamin Netanyahu mentioned Amalek and his Nephilim connection in regard to that region. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.